I'll lead number 803, then we'll have our opening prayer. And after that, Wes Blankenship will come and lead a couple of songs. Then Mark Lackey, Rick Williams, Grant Dalton, and Kyle Wadley will come and lead uh, before Chuck comes and extends the invitation. If you're going to use your book tonight, number 907 is going to be the invitation song. If you'd like to go ahead and mark that. 907. Turn my heart, O Lord, like rivers of water. Turn Almighty God, we thank Thee for this day and all of His many blessings. We thank You for giving Your Son, Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins, so that hopefully we will have hope of eternal life with You someday. Bless us this evening. Bless these men who are leading us in song. Help everything that we are doing tonight be pleasing unto You. Uh, thank You for our ministers here at this church. Chuck, Kyle, and Daryl. Uh, thank you for their abilities to teach us uh, each day and help us learn more about thy word. Be with those that are sick, uh, especially Doyle Steele, who was mentioned this morning. Be with all the health care workers that are taking care of him and help him to get back to his most normal place in life. And also those that are listening in our care lines, if it be your will, to help them get back to their normal place. Go with us through the rest of this service. God, guard, and direct us. In Christ's name, amen. As, as Drew mentioned earlier, um, he asked us song leaders to pick two songs tonight, uh, one that we sing fairly often and one new one. So um, there's probably a lot you haven't heard tonight, so that's why we asked people to come down front. Uh, we're going to sing 10,000 Reasons for my first song. Um, I, know, I think Scott led this one. Uh, 
for his lad song. Really, really pretty song. Um, the chorus, you actually sing chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus. And then during the chorus, the whole congregation sings in unison. Um, it's a really, really pretty song. Uh, the words are really, are really great. Um, we're going to sing this through once. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Then uh, 417, 417 will be the other song I'll be leading tonight, Where He Leads, I'll Follow, number 417.
Good evening. Number 222, please. Number 222. I didn't grow up singing either one of these, but I think we've sung both of them. So if you know this one, then the new one is the other one. All right? If you, if you don't know this one, then, then you know the other one. I promise. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name, Master, say. to worship. Oh. 
merciful Savior. <clears throat> Let us sing. Wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and friend, who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of men? Oh, you rescue the souls of men. You are the one that we pray. First hymn I'm going to sing tonight is number 259. 259. It's one that I've sung here a lot. A lot of you guys know I have a special tie to this for great reasons. Some of you guys know that. Okay, this is the, I'll say it again because Sean's smiling. This is the alma mater for, or the tune to this is the alma mater for the Ohio State University. So, so you're welcome for that. Let's sing the first, second, and fourth. When this passing world is done, when has sunk yon glaring sun, when I stand with Christ on high, looking o'er life's history, then, Lord, shall I 
What number? 490. 490. We'll do the first and third. When peace like a river attend up my way, when sorrow like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is. the memo about the one familiar and one new, so I'm going to lead two that are not as familiar, I think. We'll start with A Shield About Me, and I hope I can remember this chorus, because I knew it, and then I didn't, and now I think I know it again, but we'll see. <clears throat> this one, you have to try to keep the tempo up just a little bit more than you feel like you're supposed to, so we'll try to do that. Thou, O Lord, art a shield about me. You're my glory. You're the lifter of my head. Thou, O Lord, art a shield about me. 
So we're singing a shield about me and now surround us, Lord. So I guess those could be sister songs. Surround us, O oh Lord. <clears throat> As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds His people. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds His people. So sing 18, 18, sing verses 1 and 2.
523. 523. This song's a really an old song, but I remember uh, leading this song when I was a young man, a little boy. Uh, I know the Lord will find a way for me. Well, let's sing all three verses. I know the Lord will find a way. so good. Thank you uh, for all of you guys who led us. Um, it was really good from where I was sitting, and um, I appreciate, uh, I'm not a song leader, but my guess is it's more difficult leading a song that some folks in the audience don't know, and I appreciate uh, you for doing that, for uh, being willing to do that. Thanks, Drew, for getting that together. I hope that we'll continue doing some, if I get a vote, my vote is let's continue doing some of that on occasions like this to be able to sing some songs that we don't regularly sing. Those are some beautiful songs um, that, that we sang tonight. Of course, some beautiful old songs and some beautiful newer songs. We, when, I guess we started, when your kids start getting into youth group and then going to college and all that, you start hearing of some of these songs that we don't traditionally sing, and they really are beautiful, and many of them have rich and deep meaning to them. And I'm so thankful that we get to sing some of those as well as some of the older songs together as a church. It's a blessing to us, and I know it means something to our young people and college people and some recently out of college, maybe songs that they sing at camp and youth group and at college and various settings to be able to sing those with a home church as well. So uh, thanks for doing that with us for a little bit tonight. <clears throat> I want to say just a word or two before I extend the invitation to you tonight. It's... I wasn't here uh, Wednesday, and so I don't, may, maybe something was said about this then. I don't know. But uh, it's good to see Bill and Brenda Rayburn back. I you know, just wanted to say that to, uh, to them. They, uh, you may already know they spent some time, I guess three weeks, three-plus weeks in the Philippines doing some teaching, evangelism, and, and just encouraging there. And I appreciate them for being willing to go. They were out of town and traveled a lot of miles. And I got back home just recently, and we're so glad that they made it home safely and appreciate them for going. So I may just say a word. I can't wait to hear more, more about it. I haven't gotten a chance to hear uh, a lot about what they did and, and how it went, but I've, I've heard uh, just some brief, brief stuff. went very well, I think. And so um, welcome back. Men's retreat this weekend was so good. Uh, Friday night and Saturday down at Hargis and Chelsea. I don't know, 20, 25 guys, I guess, were there. And it was really good. I appreciate uh, Rick Williams and... I know others helped Rick to get that together, 
but and just just good to be able to get away for a little while. And we had three good lessons from Jeremy High Note of Augusta, Georgia, and I ate some and, and goofed around and played some different games together, and it was good. It's encouraging to our spirits, and I appreciate the opportunity to get together with um, good friends and brothers in Christ. When I was, Psalm, Psalm 103. Uh, I think Wes it was who led us in the song 10,000 Reasons, a beautiful, beautiful song. Love that, love the meaning and love the tone, the melody of the song. And uh, Psalm 103 is a psalm that includes some of those, some of those words. And I want to read this. I'm not going to say a whole lot to you tonight, but just I want you to think about this psalm for just a minute as we com- conclude our worship together. I was thinking as we were singing tonight, I don't know exactly what's he- what heaven's going to be like. It, I, I'm pretty sure we're not just going to be sitting around singing 24, you know, 7. I don't think that's what it's going to be like. I think, I think it's going to be, I don't know, I don't know, it's going to be incredible. We're going to be in the presence of God as, as we want to be and as we were created to be. I think we'll be overwhelmed with His majesty. It's going to include praise. It's going to include service. And it'll be unhindered by our sinfulness and by the world and by the distractions and by aching backs and by just you know distraction about kids or or work or all the stuff that makes worship hard here I mean it, it's I think worship it's important to remember worship is an active thing it's it's difficult because we're trying to think about what we need to be thinking about but then there's so there's those thoughts that keep coming in and just you know just stuff I think one of the great things about heaven is just to be the fact that we'll be in the presence of God. The greatest thing will be that we're in the presence of God and we won't have sin to deal with. We won't have the world and distractions and, and all this stuff around us. It'll be, it'll be great. I think the sentiments of Psalm 103, we believe it, but at the same time, we don't believe it now as much as we'll know it then. Let me just read a few verses to you. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. He closes with these three verses. Bless the Lord, O you his angels. You mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works and all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Some words of David in Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul. We as a church are to be offering offering continual words of praise to God for who he is and how good he is and what he's done and what he continues to do. And uh, just in those moments of worship, when you find yourself caught up in the almost a euphoric kind of experience, those those are fleeting, you know. We have them sometimes. I hope you have them in worship where you just are are enraptured with God and for a moment everything just comes together and you you truly feel like you're worshiping. That, That euphoric kind of feeling, I think is a little taste of what it's going to be like to be in the presence of God eternally, to experience Him as we've only dreamed of experiencing here. If you're not a Christian tonight, we invite you uh, to to put your hope and your trust and your life in Him. Uh, If you believe in Him with all of your heart, if you you want to trust in Him, if you want to give your heart to Him, do that tonight. Uh, We'll baptize you based on your profession of faith that you believe that Jesus is God's only begotten Son. As you turn away from your life, your past life, and, and just trust it all to Him. We invite you to make that confession and obey Him tonight. Uh, if you're already a child of God, but you come here tonight as one who needs to come back to Him, having gotten your life out of out of off kilter, out of focus for a bit, we invite you to come back. Let's stand and sing this song.
Carl, if you would, I'd like you to um, come lead a prayer on Corbin's behalf. In just a moment, Carl's one of our uh, elders here. And uh, Corbin Holland comes forward tonight, and Corbin's words were that he does not feel like he has been a good friend to some others in the youth group, particularly some of the younger younger ones. He hasn't set the right example for them, and he just wants to be forgiven of that and wants to be a, a better a better friend to them. I appreciate Corbin, appreciate Corbin, your heart and your desire to walk with the Lord and to be the kind of friend that God wants you to be. And I um, appreciate the youth group and their encouragement of Corbin, encouragement of one another as they as they try to walk and do the things that they should. We'll go to God on his behalf, on your behalf now, Corbin. Let us pray at this time. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you, Father, for the avenue of worship that you have given to us. We thank you, Father, for the invitation that you extend to us. Each and every day of our life, Father, you were there for us. We have the opportunity, Father, to choose to follow you or to do something different. Father, your desire is for us to follow you, but we sometimes, Father, will do things that are not in that direction. Corbin comes tonight. Father, confessing those things that he feels in his heart that are not what you would expect out of a Christian young man, we pray, Father, that you would help Corbin to always have a heart that is touched by your word and by the example that you have given to us. We pray, Father, that you would bless Corbin at this time to, to help him to be a better example, help him to be a better friend. We realize, Father, that each and every day in our life we can touch someone it may just be by the actions or the example that we leave. It may be by teaching them in a more forceful and directive way. But, Father, you always give us those opportunities to serve you. And we pray, Father, that as Corbin recognizes these opportunities, that he will embrace them and to draw closer to you. Father, help us as a family here to, to build up and encourage one another. And when we have those in our midst that are desiring your help and desiring to seek your mercy and grace and forgiveness. Let us be there to respond in a visible way to, to show that Christianity is indeed something that is in each and of us, that we can reflect that in the way that we live, and that hopefully that will be beneficial to those that are around about us. Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ, and it's through him that we offer this prayer. Be standing for a moment, please. The Lord's Supper has been left prepared for those who were unable to partake of it this morning, and we'll sing uh, number 792. We'll sing that through one time. If you would make your way down front to one of these front two pews, uh, someone will serve you. My eyes are dry. My
and his body that did not deserve to be beaten and killed on our behalf, Lord. But we thank you so much for sending him for that reason so that we can have hope and have faith and have restoration in you, Lord. Uh, we pray that those partaking of this bread will remember that as well as, uh, as well as this time. It is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Six will be our closing song. I want to say another thank you to the song leaders who really led a song that uh, they knew going in. They ran the risk of singing a solo up here, but I think it is good that we can get together and learn new songs. And all of you who are able to move forward, uh, I can tell you it makes a big difference for us leading songs. And I know it made a lot of difference for other of you who are able to sit closer together. So I really appreciate both of those groups for doing that. Uh, if you would, let's stand and we'll sing the first and last verses of this song. There is a habitation built by the living God for all of every nation who seek that grand abode. Oh, Zion, Zion, I long thy gates to see. Oh, Zion. Thanks for another day, Lord, another day to come worship your name, Lord, and sing worships to you, Lord. At this time, we pray for all those who weren't, weren't able to be with us at 
today, Lord, either due to spiritual or health reasons, Lord. Please bring them back whenever it is your will, Lord. We also pray that you please be with all of us as we start a new week, Lord. Please, please be with those who are finishing up school, Lord, for the school year. And um, please be with those who have worked this week, Lord. Lord, we pray that you please let us be a shining light to others in this dark world, Lord. Please help us um, live by your will, Lord, in everything we do. At this time, we also pray that you please bless the food that has been prepared for us for the last leader's banquet, Lord. Let it be nourishment to our bodies, Lord. We pray that you forgive us of our sins and thank you for everything that you give us. And thank you mostly for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins, Lord. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.